Berlin, a green metropolis in the heart of Europe. A cosmopolitan city and a haven for wildlife. It's rich pickings as long as you're adaptable and imaginative enough. Berlin is home to several million wild animals. A typically urban assembly of migrants, locals, tourists, squatters and rental communities. There's a bit of everything, from shy, secretive animals to those that love the limelight. Cheeky, bold, tolerant, and of course there's a bit of that special Berlin charm. Berlin on New Year's Eve. People celebrate the onset of a new year. On a night like this, people hardly ever think about the wild animals they share their space with. Just as every year, the celebrations are especially raucous in Berlin Kreuzberg. In the vaults below, bats are staunchly clinging on to their hibernation. Waking up in the dead of winter could be lethal for them. Luckily, the breach of peace is only short-lived. Berlin's wild inhabitants are out looking for food in the freezing night. Party leftovers aren't exactly what a hungry fox is looking for. Towards morning, a comforting warmth radiates from the sea of houses. Anyone without a stove has to carefully conserve their energy. Even loners like grey herons cosy up to one another in winter. It's easier to share the misery. The sun does little to cut through this icy cold. Temperatures of minus 20 degrees Celsius are not unheard of in Berlin. For a short time, a new, attractive surface emerges in the best location. How to eat something that doesn't want to hold still? Especially when your neighbour has a delicious pretzel on their plate. The seagull is prepared for its rival. What's gone can no longer be stolen. Only crumbs are left for the crow. Is it reason enough to fight, though? That would take too much energy. Thousands of water birds gather at a few ice-free spots. In particularly harsh winters, the city council looks the other way when the animals are fed some fresh food. Now, before the onset of spring, their winter fat has long gone. For the Berlinale, the famous and beautiful come to town. The film festival attracts visitors from across the world. 
a red carpet is rolled out for Hollywood's finest. The American stars of Berlin's wildlife scene are raccoons. They've become permanent fixtures in this cosmopolitan town. The raccoons are restless. In February, they are searching for prime living space while preparing for the arrival of the next generation. Ideally, a tree hole high off the ground but an abandoned shed will do. It's quite cosy here. This could work well. But first impressions can be misleading. This shed is already occupied. High time to beat a hasty retreat and find a different home. Spring is just around the corner. Warmer weather starts off a busy time. The homes of some Berlin lodgers have taken a battering during the winter. Logging trees for wood to repair their home is a job for the entire beaver family. They always work near water. These large rodents are excellent swimmers and use their flattened tails as rudders. Beavers are careful to spare the trees surrounding their lodge and are harvesting wood from an area up to three kilometers away. The gnawed branches are transported to the lodge via the water. And the use of the Berlin waterways has tradition. Beavers have been back in Berlin since 1944, while for a long time it wasn't certain that they would settle here again. They have long since adapted to the urban setting and human customs. On the water, the rules are very clear. Professional shipping takes priority. It's obvious to the ferryman that the beaver is on a business trip. So it doesn't even matter that he's approaching from the port side. In Berlin, the beaver holds the right of way. Finally, spring arrives. Green pioneers push through every crack. Slowly, Berlin is gaining color again. Winter fugitives return from the warm south. The resident peregrine falcon of the Red City Hall reclaims his territory in the heart of the city. He's courting a female who's checking out the nesting situation on offer. A critical moment. She seems to approve. Now, nothing stands in the way of a new generation of falcons at the Alexanderplatz. In Schoenberg, a squirrel mother is already busy looking after her young.
she gave birth to them in a birdhouse on the fourth floor. Only just six weeks old, the youngsters leave the safety of the nest more and more often. It's an exciting time. There's so much to discover, but danger lurks everywhere. Just one in five squirrels survives its first year. An experienced mother improves the odds. She knows her clumsy young are best protected from hawks, crows and bad falls if they stay inside the birdhouse for now. Female squirrels raise their young on their own. They'll learn from her what to eat and how to get about safely in the city. An elaborate claw manicure precedes the female's foraging trip. It may seem extravagant, but it's essential. Only those with sharp claws and steeled nerves will survive here. As secure as this nest in dizzying heights might be, it does have its downsides. It's like a top city parkour. Spring embraces the city. A protective and nourishing green blanket turns Berlin into an urban jungle. Nesting communities congregate and the birth rate skyrockets. There's at least one breeding bird pair for every one of the three and a half million human inhabitants. The newcomers demand to be fed constantly. Having a good neighborly relationship with humans has definite advantages. Busy tits make the return journey to feed their young up to 900 times a day. A great crested grebe sometimes manages to get the task done with just a single feeding. And while the first chicks around gain size and weight, others are still waiting to hatch. It's just a matter of patience. Everywhere tables and chairs line the streets. Cafes and beer gardens are like magnets for Berliners. And they are the realm of the sparrows. Berlin is the sparrow capital of Germany. Nowhere else are their numbers as stable as they are here. They're an essential part of summer. Less common animals may even make headlines. A badger in Charlottenburg? It seems like Berlin's animals are gradually pushing further and further into human territory. But the newspapers aren't telling the whole story. 
This badger doesn't roam the staircase of his own free will, and he isn't interested in finding food or frightening people either. Instead, he's looking for a way out of this courtyard at the Stuttgarter Platz. An electronic gate turned this apparent foraging opportunity into a trap. He's become an urban prisoner. At least he's not going to starve here. There are plenty of mice and earthworms to be found. But badgers are night active animals. He needs to find a suitable den before first light. The damaged house foundation is his salvation. He gets to work immediately. Badgers like to have comfortable homes and tend to fashion cushions from leaves and mosses. This poor guy is lucky to have found a den at all. Meanwhile, the day shift takes over. Perhaps he'll have more luck getting out of his courtyard prison tomorrow night. Berlin is the biggest city in Germany. People from more than 180 nations call it home. Living together in such close proximity can forge the most wonderful friendships. Sixth floor, top location, very central. A balcony box has just become home to a new generation. It's not unusual. Over 300 mallards nest on Berlin's top stories every year. This duck has grown on her involuntary hosts over time. She's been laying her eggs here for the last seven years. The respectful Frau Enter has turned into a casual Frenter. She's become part of the family. As soon as all the chicks have hatched, Herr Redler calls the duck taxi from the Nature and Biodiversity Conservation Union. They'll take the duck family to the lake. The chicks have to be on the water within 24 hours to consume their first food. The taxi is on its way, but time is pressing. A rainstorm is looming. Frenter is nervous. Should the chick's down feathers get wet and stick together during transport, they'll drown in the lake. Frenter looks for another route to the lake. No chance. The storm arrives. They'll have to wait it out in their dry nest. Not a second too soon. Short, violent storms are common at this time of year. They're important for Berlin's greenery. Wild, as well as not so wild Berliners, they all have to look for cover. It's all over as quickly as it started. Now they're ready for the duck taxi. Just like every year, Andre Halau from the Nature and Biodiversity Conservation Union collects the duck family. Yeah, 
Ebene. Jetzt können wir die Kritten einsammeln. Frenti knows from previous years that the fastest way to the lake is via a white bag. As long as she can hear her chicks, she stays calm. One of the chicks gathers first impressions of his hometown. The journey takes them to the Große Tiergarten, a park right in the heart of Berlin. Curtain up for the most beautiful lake in the city. A good start to their first summer. There are over 1,400 kinds of plants and animals in the Tiergarten. This was once a hunting ground for the aristocracy, but today it's open to everyone. Including these new Berlin bears. This raccoon mum is on a hot trail. It's not exactly danger free, but she takes the risk. She has to feed four cubs and needs plenty of high quality food to produce milk. The coup is a success. Only the cats know who's plundered their bowl and who's going to fill it again. The raccoon will carry on looking for food until late into the night. Berlin's courtyards are especially popular in summer. Many are beautifully kept, little islands of peace in the hustle and bustle of the city. In the Charlottenburg courtyard, the badger has slept the day away in his provisional cellar den. Once again, he goes in search of an exit from this courtyard labyrinth. He cuts a ghostly figure in the night. Thanks to his sensitive nose, he manages to find a few small snacks at least. But where is the way out? There must be an exit. Finally, an open door leads him to freedom. The cautious way he approaches the road is typical for an experienced city slicker. joins Berlin's nightlife. Just like the Badger, many Berliners are definite night owls, including European rhinoceros beetles, 
rabbits and secretive brown rats. The rats alone double the number of Berlin's inhabitants. They busily collect the leftovers of city life. What can't be consumed immediately is carefully stored. Even if the larder is located in the no parking zone. Summer nights are short. In public spaces like the Tempelhof of Flugfeld, the signs of yesterday's feasts are still apparent. Night owls and early risers meet at the cold buffet. As the morning progresses, the city traffic increases. Anyone leaving too late for their journey home can easily get into trouble. A lucky escape. One particularly busy insect works the city's sea of blossoms incessantly. When weather and food supplies are just right, bees reproduce quickly. Eventually the colony becomes too big and a part of it swarms to start a new bee state elsewhere. That's when beekeepers are on alert. Whoever provides a new home for the breakaway colony can later reap the bees rewards. glorious weather in Berlin. It's a good day to swarm. The Prinzessinnengarten in Kreuzberg is buzzing. A queen bee has arrived with her entourage. As befits her status, she has settled high up. A serious challenge for Erika Meyer. She's a beekeeper and set on capturing the swarm. But first, she needs to entice the queen into her box. Her royal court will follow of its own accord. A spirited strike is met with success. Berlin's bees are known for their agreeable temperament. Even in this situation, only very few will sting. Bees stay wild at heart, but they happily settle into a nice new home. Frau Meyer has gained a new colony. Unlike the countryside where monocultures are predominant, the city always has new and different flowers on offer. The bee's new home on the roofs of the German capital is located right in the middle of a highly diverse urban plant realm. The result is an especially valuable honey. The bees filter any toxins straight out and the high percentage of different pollen makes this honey especially healthy. When people are found in a swarm, it's usually because there's something to celebrate. At the Carnival of Cultures, flamboyant personalities abound. Berlin celebrates its being a melting pot of different nationalities. Feather colours and fur lengths.
Another international guest hovers high above the residence of Berlin's mayor. Peregrine falcons are at home on almost all continents. Right now, both adult falcons are working hard to feed their chicks. One floor above, Andre Laubner gets ready. Today, the chicks will be given their jewellery. Andre Laubner has no fear of heights, and that's crucial. The city hall tower is almost 90 metres high. The window of opportunity to band the birds is small. If the chicks are too young, there's a chance the adults will abandon their offspring. Later on, there's a risk the youngsters are almost ready to fledge and might take a tumble while trying to escape. These three young peregrine falcons are now exactly one month old. Andre Laubner finds a male and two females in the nest and carefully stows them away for the ensuing climbing tour. The adults always stay nearby. They too still wear the bands they received as chicks. Andre Laubner and the falconer Paul Sommer are a well-practiced team. They've been banding and monitoring Berlin's peregrine falcons for many years. In about two weeks' time, the youngsters will be ready to fledge, the male a few days ahead of the females. The female chicks are already a little heavier and bigger than the male. Even in adult falcons, gender can be distinguished by size. Thanks to the bands, these three are now recognisable as registered Berliners, at least through binoculars. Summertime. No ray of sun goes unappreciated. The welcome warmth of long, balmy summer evenings makes for a peaceful atmosphere. Animals and people come closer together. Berlin's foxes are rabies free so encounters like these are harmless. Human curiosity doesn't impress the fox of the Chancellery building. He is the top celebrity amongst wild Berliners. The biggest fox den in the city is really a sports stadium with a living green roof. This is the home venue of the successful Foxes Berlin. Just like the wild city foxes, they hunt efficiently in a pack. Life in and around the so-called fox den is under constant observation. In the security centre, a team is always on watch duty. These two have become involuntary nature observers because there aren't just foxes playing in the Max Schmeling Hall. Some even live here. Ah, oh, I thought that they were being smelled out of the list. Yeah. 
These security guards gain insights into the secret lives of Berlin's wild animals that some biologists might be envious of. The onset of night lures many hungry animals out of their hiding places. The raccoon mother is in luck, a full dustbin and no one to be seen anywhere. Raccoons are adept climbers and infamous for their inquisitive nature. Their sensitive paws allow them to reach almost any food source. But the competition isn't asleep either. Two rivals are deadly serious about their threats. <coughs> for them and their young, life in the urban jungle is a constant fight for survival. As the raccoon population in the city grows, resources become scarcer and more valuable. For now, the territory is divided up. In the meantime, the raccoon cubs are left to their own devices. So far, there are no nurseries for wild city kids, the mothers simply have to trust the little gangsters don't get up to mischief. But curiosity gets the better of them. The adventure takes its course. There is a lot to discover in the Tiergarten Park. But there are also a lot of enemies. Not to mention cars, bright lights and unfamiliar sounds. For today, these two have had enough. As fast as they can, they hurry back home. In midsummer, Dawn starts at 4 a.m. A chorus of birds fills the air. In June and July, the shrill calls of swifts join in. They stay in Berlin for just a few short weeks, catching insects on the fly. Berlin is one of the greenest cities in Europe. There are 420,000 trees. Over half the surface area is given over to green spaces, woodlands or water. Inner city parks like the Große Tiergarten, the Volkspark Friedrichshain and the Zoological Gardens invite everyone to linger. And where else can you take in the sights of all the important government buildings from a boat? On hot summer days, people and animals really appreciate the watery sanctuaries their city has to offer. 
Aside from the numerous rivers, canals and lakes, almost 300 wells and water gardens offer relief for overheated urbanites. Everywhere, creatures are bathing and showering, sometimes voluntarily and sometimes against their will. The comparatively warm city climate also makes it possible for exotic immigrants to survive here. This population of praying mantises are the northernmost group of their kind in Central Europe. Between the railway tracks, they find plenty of prey. Once she has struck, no amount of praying can save you. Her two huge compound eyes won't miss the smallest of movements. Even during courtship, their hunting reflexes remain active. Well camouflaged and almost motionless, they ambush unwary insects. Bees are the mantis' favourite food. After all, they have a sweet filling. Such a delicious feast immediately attracts irritating freeloaders. The smaller male doesn't get a bite, but on the other hand, he has a good chance of not turning into dinner himself. The new parents die soon after mating and egg laying. Only their eggs will survive the winter. Deep within the belly of the city is the home of a different kind of railway dweller. The little wood mice live completely in tune with the subway timetable. Contrary to their former home in the forest, they have hardly any enemies in Berlin's underworld and there is no competition. Above all else, their move to the big city is related to food. It pretty much rains down on them. Almost heavenly circumstances in a seemingly uncomfortable environment. Gradually, the summer is coming to an end and the nights are drawing in. Nocturnal city dwellers welcome the change. Only one of the fox mother's litter has survived. Soon it will have to stand on its own feet. She'll tolerate her offspring's company a little while longer, but then she'll chase him out of her territory. The young fox doesn't follow his mother beyond the gate. Perhaps he's lacking courage. For now, he can still hope she'll bring back a few scraps for him to eat. The city foxes of Berlin aren't dependent on human leftovers. They also feed on rats, fruit and earthworms. But tonight, it's going to be fast food. These metal monsters have already claimed his siblings' lives. But if he learns to be as careful as his mother, he can grow older than most country foxes. His begging meets with success, perhaps for the last time.
cooler temperatures announce the advent of a new season. Autumn arrives in town with wafts of morning mist and fog. Some wild Berliners now tend to be active for part of the day too. The worry of not being well enough prepared for winter outweighs their shyness. For a hedgehog, finding suitable winter quarters is top of the list. The city dons a colourful autumnal cloak. But the time of plenty is not over yet. On the contrary, for many animals, it is harvest season. The Chancellery's crop is ripe. For days, the starlings have been thieving the coveted grapes. The police are looking the other way. And another case of wild vandalism goes unpunished. Chestnuts are attacking unsuspecting passers-by and car roofs. A botanical extravagance that the human inhabitants of the city are quite happy to tolerate. Whatever Berlin's trees drop at this time of year is collected and stored in a safe place. Bringing the harvest home can be like walking a tightrope. Without its bushy tail as a balancing pole, the task would be almost impossible. An unquenchable drive to collect against all odds is the squirrel's life insurance. Even the autumn leaves now grow too heavy. Following an inaudible signal, Berlin's animals begin to split up. Many will leave the city for several months. Starlings begin to gather in growing numbers. Like the crows, they congregate in the evenings to spend the increasingly chilly nights in the sheltered inner city. Before they eventually fly south, thousands of starlings adorn the Berlin evening sky. An exclusive goodbye parade for their hometown. Crows, on the other hand, are hardy Berliners through and through. They will stay put for the winter. In turn, they don't miss a single show that's on offer. The memory of long summer nights is reflected in a huge array of light effects and colours. Artificial and natural worlds melt together. Once again, the city's landmarks show themselves from their best side. Construction work opens up pathways for the light to reach otherwise hidden worlds. 
the bat below the Schlossplatz get ready for an outing. Around the brightly lit facades, they're still able to capture a lot of insects. The wild animals of Berlin take all this hubbub in their stride. The commotion is just as much part of the city biosphere as they are. They carry on with their everyday and night business, just like everyone else does. The wilderness is part of Berlin, a fascinating parallel world of big and small natural wonders right outside the front door.